Okay, I've got one of these uh, low-cost APC power supplies. It's called the Backup ES525, and it's been working for me for quite a number of years, but recently it stopped working. Uh, the rating is uh, for 500 VA and 300 watts. You can pause and read that for yourself. In any case, I've got this thing open up, and uh, I'll try to see if I can get this thing fixed. So we have this board here, which is uh, held in by uh, some plastic clips here. We'll release those clips and then we'll remove. I've already taken out the uh, battery. It uses one of those uh, lead acid batteries. And uh, right now we want to look at this. So we want to zoom all the way in here. And uh, it should be quite obvious what the problem is. Well, at least uh, some of the problems. You can see this particular, uh, this particular capacitor here uh, is already uh, Oh, it's bulging, so this needs changing. This probably needs changing as well. It's a little bit loose. Um, it's got a... There appears to be some sort of uh, socket here. Um, oh yeah, it's, it's probably for this button. There's a, there's a button over here for power, I think it is. So that probably goes in here. I uh, probably need to switch out some of these things. There's a um, part here with what appears to be a sticker on it. And a crystal. This must be a microprocessor. Okay, we'll we'll get that off and we'll take a closer look at that. And there's a whole bunch of uh, power transistors there. Those are MOSFETs. There's another MOSFET here with a chunky, uh, chunky heat sink, and another one down here. So quite a number of MOSFETs. Um, relays to switch. I presume to switch over from mains, and then the power goes out. Another MOSFET here. And the power goes out on these black and white wires to the uh, to the power rail, outgoing power rail. Um, these yellow things here, these these are they are resistors. Okay, so there's nothing much under the board. Just see here, there's a 10, 10 milli ohm resistor, which is which is this guy. That's a ten milli ohm resistor. Probably there for some measuring, um, current measuring uh, function. And then come some MOVs here and a couple of uh, car style fuses, you know, automotive type fuses down here, rated at 30 amps. There's an LED on board here that's interesting. Oh, okay. So the LED goes through this uh, light pipe. It's got this uh, light pipe over here. You can probably see that. And that brings it outside. Okay, so basically what we need to do is uh, we're going to have to remove the capacitors and then swap them out. Fortunately, I don't have uh, this value right now, which is a 22,000 and a 33,000. So we will get that on order and then we'll come back here. Well, actually, I'll remove it and then we'll replace it uh, when I get the parts. Okay, we'll zoom right in here. Just see if we can peel that cover off here, this piece of paper here. Let's see what sort of thing this is. I'm pretty sure it's a microcontroller. It's got a lot of pins on it. So I'm not sure if it's something custom. Oh, oh there goes the part. Let's see. So according to that, it's a PIC one. So it's a microchip pick 16872A, 16872A or something, some such thing like that. Alright, couple of auto isolators I just noticed there and a beeper. Okay, well, that's just really not necessary but out of curiosity. Uh, I think what we'll do next is uh, just get the offending capacitor out. Maybe I should leave it in there until my new parts come in. Uh, in any case, uh, we'll continue uh, once we get the parts. Sorry, gotta use a using a different meter. 
Let's we'll get this guy out here. Trusty Fluke. Let's see if we can get this guy measured. All right. So, so this one says um, three thousand three hundred. Let's see what the meter tells us. All right. Um, three point five three uh, millifarad. That's about right, actually. It might be swollen, but it seems to be in the ballpark. And this is this is span. This is about one hundred microfarad. All right, so this one is span. Okay, so this one is definitely gone. Well, I'll change both of them. <coughs> So now the trick is to just assemble this whole thing. Uh, that's, if you notice real carefully, there's a little bit of a black spot down here. There's just a quite a bit of a blackness down here. But I think that's you can see that. You know, um, oh, come on, focus. There you go. And you can see that there's quite a collection of dust. But I think that might be to do with the uh, uh, the ionization and the dust being affected by this. Okay, finally, got the whole thing back together. Uh, it's connected, the battery is in, the silver acid SL battery is in, and it's all connected. Uh, I've, there was a slight spark when I connected it. I'm going to just close this up, flip it around so that we can look at the lights and see if this thing actually works or not. Fingers crossed now. Fingers crossed now. Here we go, power. Turn around this, okay. Well, contact. That sounds good. Whoa. Okay, well, it's saying that there's no power, but it appears to be working. Let's uh, let's see if we've got uh, some power here. Let's have a look. Let's see if we've got power coming up on this thing here. That would be the right AC. Uh, no, no AC power. Let's try again. No, it doesn't seem to be powering up. Maybe it needs it needs a significant load. So I tell you what, I'm gonna give it a load. Let's say let's give it something to power up. Maybe, maybe we'll give it, let's see this thing, this is the power supply, let's see it goes, okay, that's kicking in, and um, oh, I smell burning, I smell something burning. If something explodes, it might be good. Am I using the right, wrong power cable? That's nice. I smell something burning. This is not a good sign, but I do smell something burning. Yes, there is power. There is power. I see 220 volts, but something is definitely burning. I need to turn this off. Reset, reset. I need to turn this off because something is burning. Oh, yes, absolutely. Something is definitely burning. I'm not sure what's burning, but something is on fire in there. Okay, well, I guess that's why we need to find out what? Yep, yep, I'm recording. Okay, so. All right, we shall come back in a while just to see what actually is on fire here. Once I let the caps discharge, all right, we shall be back shortly. Okay, so while we were off camp chasing down that smell of something burning, uh, no luck with that actually. Um, but you know, honestly, nothing seemed to be wrong. It was powering up, it was working. I'm not sure whether it was some internal sparking in the uh, coil in the transformer but if it was the smell eventually uh, went away and there was no more smell. I've tested this uh, 
a little bit it seemed to be okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and put this whole thing back together again uh, I actually tested it off the um, my uh, power supply and it was drawing about 500 milliamps on 12 volts when it was uh, idle and then with the load the, you know because the current drawn of course will increase with that but it appears to be otherwise working so I'm going to try to put the battery back and uh, put it work here it's always a little bit scary when dealing with stuff like this just put this down like so okay like that Turn that around and make sure that the ground the wires go all the way down here that keeps keeps it firmly in place. The taps. So it's not, you know. I guess in practice, sometimes it's probably not best engineering practice to just power up stuff like that. But well, sometimes it's just not worth the effort, I guess. But we shall see if this burns the house down. Okay, so that's covered. We get a cover back on top. I hate to reopen stuff, but I think I think we're good. I think we're good with this one. All right, it looks good. So screws back in here, um, back in the four corners, and put uh, that in here. And then we'll, it's just a regular Phillips head. Just tighten that up. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the. Uh, I forgot the jumper. Got to take this out. I forgot the power jumper. That's what I forgot. Okay, so now I got to take this out again. And don't you hate it when stuff like that happens? But it happens to me quite a bit. Trying not to electrocute myself in this whole process, but for some reason it seems to be a bit more difficult to remove right now than it was before. Something is stuck now. I'm not sure what is stuck, but something is definitely stuck now. That wasn't stuck before. Okay, yeah, there we go. So what I forgot was this. This needed to be back in here. Switch. Yep. You know what? That looks bad. The uh, connection over there is looking bad. And I think I probably need to resolder that one. So I'm going to turn on the soldering iron again. It looks like it might have come loose as a result. This this bit right here, this one here, uh, looks like it might have come loose as a result of um, movement in the past. So, all right. So, this bit of uh, actually, what I'll do is. More exposed copper there. Yep. Just a bit of exposed copper, and then yeah, this should do the trick. You heard that beep? That's because the capacitor is still charged. So I need to get that in place. All right. Okay, I just realized that I uh, my last couple of video clips, I didn't have the uh, microphone on, so you have to lift off the uh, audio from the cameras. But uh, this is uh, all put together now, right? And uh, I've got it plugged in. And I've got this uh, meter here, so just so that we can see if this thing is working. So I'm gonna stick this right in here. You know, we've got a load there just to keep it alive. 
So this thing now reads zero, but let's just turn it on. Okay, so not sure you can see that. Um, it's 220 volts. So this thing is working and there's no smell of burning um, plastic, which is what it was early on. So this is working now. I'm going to turn this off. Okay, it looks like it's okay. Well, I guess that pretty much, pretty much wraps that up. The APC backup UPS ES525. I mean, gets the job done. It's not a great one. All right, see you guys in the next video. Bye.